Hi guys, so I am frequently asked about my experience of undergraduate and postgraduate studies at the university I specifically attended and living in that city as a student. So the university I attended for both my undergraduate and postgraduate as it happens was the University of Edinburgh. So I'm going to take this opportunity to talk to you about my experience as a student at the University of Edinburgh, studying my course and living there as a student. Now other pertinent information you probably want to have before going into this video, if you're not familiar with uh, my other videos, is that I was a student of classical studies for my undergraduate and classics for my postgraduate at Edinburgh, which are both degrees that were under the umbrella of the School of History, Classics and Archaeology, and specifically the Classics department. Another little bit of background information would be that I also spent my entire childhood growing up in Edinburgh. So I chose to do my undergraduate degree at a university in the same city that I'd grown up in, been raised in. I was very familiar with Edinburgh from that perspective, so I didn't have the experience of um, appearing in a new city at the beginning of my undergraduate like some people do but that doesn't mean I can't review my experience of the university and overall my experience at the University of Edinburgh was incredibly positive. I loved my time there especially for my undergraduate and I'm really happy with my decision to go to that university. There was well two or three main reasons I chose to go to Edinburgh. Um, one of which was very emotional and two of which were more practical and a fourth convenient plus point for me I guess going to the university as well. So the emotional reason was that my dad had gone to the University of Edinburgh and had been a mature student whilst I was a child and I just remember watching him as a student at Edinburgh University, visiting the campus with him and really falling in love with it and it kind of ingraining itself in my brain as a bit of a dream to go there. Um, but obviously that wasn't the final reason I chose to go there. There was other things to take into consideration. Um, the second reason I chose to go there was that I was always going to go to a university in Scotland because that was a much cheaper option for me as a student coming from Scotland as well as the Scottish government as it stands currently pays the tuition fees for Scottish students attending Scottish universities. And the third reason which is more applicable to everybody is that the University of Edinburgh is not only a very highly regarded university in general but it has a really excellent track record in the humanities department and classics specifically and classics isn't something that is taught at every university so I already had my choices limited for me and I knew I would get a good experience of ancient history archaeology, all of those things at Edinburgh because it taught all of them and had really good reviews for those subjects. Going to Edinburgh University also meant that in my first year I could live at home which again saved me a lot of money um, until I moved out in second year. That was also a major determining factor in the reason I went there for my postgraduate because um, I did have to pay fees for my postgraduate and they were quite expensive <laughs> and there aren't currently postgraduate loans available in Scotland for Scottish students um, so I did have to pay those fees which meant I had to go home and live with my parents so that I could pay for my fees. But I was also drawn to the university in part because I'd had such a positive experience there during my undergraduate. Um, I was familiar with the campus and the teaching methods which I felt would be an easier transition um, and I just knew it was a good place to go because I had my own experience from there so that's why I stayed there for my postgraduate. But now that you know my reasons for going to Edinburgh, now we can talk about my actual experience there. So in general it lived up to my expectations. Really wonderful. My undergraduate was four years long. The older Scottish universities, if not all of the Scottish universities, um, you can do a four year undergraduate master's degree. It's not a three year BA and it's not the equivalent of a postgraduate masters, it's like this weird in-between thing that you can do at Scottish universities. That's all I can say about it really. So what I attained at the end of my undergraduate was a MA with honours in classical studies. And I initially started off at Edinburgh University studying for a joint honours degree in ancient history and classical archaeology. But I've talked about this a little in past videos. I ended up deciding I didn't want to be an archaeologist and I wanted to focus my academic career on text-based studies. So just so that I had a little bit more flexibility with my courses and that I didn't have mandatory archaeology classes to take in my last two years, I chose to switch 
to classical studies. Classical studies was kind of the equivalent of doing a text leaning ancient history degree without requiring you to study the ancient languages. And I didn't take ancient languages as a part of my undergraduate, I did do them in summer schools and um, evening classes and then did them as a part of my postgraduate degree, I did ancient Greek. What I did take were a multitude of ancient history, classical archaeology, classical art, classical literature courses when I was at Edinburgh. In my first year I definitely studied a broader spectrum in that I did straight up archaeology which included more scientific archaeological methods and um, prehistoric archaeology rather than just classical based stuff in Greece and Rome which was really fascinating experience and I loved being exposed to all of that even if I did choose not to go down that route I was so happy to study that and what I did find it was really easy to change my course and I know a few other people that changed the courses within the school of classics archaeology and history there was a real ease in your first two years to change. Having those two years pre-honours that didn't contribute to my overall final grade gave me that little bit of wiggle room to figure out what worked for me. When I was there the faculty in the classics department offered a really broad range of courses. There was options on Greek history and Roman history, um, art based, archaeology based, text based stuff, uh, philosophy, lots of different things that I could take and get my teeth into and I felt like I got exposure to a really wide range of subjects and I really enjoyed that. Obviously within my niche that's for certain um, but it did help me. I got to go all the way back to the Mycenaeans and the Minoans and I know there were medieval and Byzantine type courses. I never went that far but I did study the um, early to mid Roman Empire. That's kind of as far as I chose to go but I did have that really wide range to pick from and uh, the staff were amazing. I had amazing lecturers, lecturers who have been in their fields for decades as well as newer lecturers but that's not to underestimate um, somebody that is is new to that, that academic field in terms of in their first few years as a lecturer because they have some really interesting insight, they can be really innovative, they can really shake things up, up in academia and that's certainly necessary. Um, so I had a really nice array of people and I also had that educational security in these really experienced lecturers as well. I didn't like every course I did, that is a given. You're going to expect that from every university. If you expect to enjoy every single course that you take, you're probably expecting a little too much. I mean, you might, but... I wouldn't expect it, uh, you're trying new things out so there's a good chance there might be something that isn't for you. I got some rubbish grades, I got some really great grades and I felt like I, with the feedback I got from my lectures and markers was really able to improve on my grades so I feel like my lectures gave me everything I could possibly want from them. Sometimes I had to ask for a little bit more expansion because it's not always enough that little form that you get with your essay but if you make the effort to then email your lecturer and ask for a meeting the, my lecturers were always really happy to meet with me and build on the feedback that they put on essays and I found that always really really helpful. It, I always got the clarification I needed and um, the advice that I needed to improve in my experience. That was always my experience in my undergraduate. I definitely in my early years was less inclined to seek out that feedback and that was to my detriment and it took me a little while perhaps to learn but I don't see that as a flaw of the lecturers. You have to ask for that feedback, they are marking tons of students work um, so you have to be willing to to go that extra mile um, and be an independent thinker and ask for feedback so do that as soon as possible wherever you are studying. And I do want to do a video more discussing my experience particularly of the difference between postgraduate and undergraduate but just worth mentioning at this point is that I did feel in my masters there was a little bit less selection for me because a lot of what was being taught were similar to the things that were taught in my undergraduate courses because this was the same university and the same lecturers with the same expertise and there was people coming into this university from completely different backgrounds that didn't have the exposure to the same kind of teaching methods and um, information so this degree was designed for people not necessarily coming from the same university so I did feel like there was a bit of repetition although there was obviously more in-depth analysis and a postgraduate isn't all about 
new information. It's about honing your skills as an academic to prepare you for research. Um, I just think that's maybe worth noting. In terms of social life, there are tons of societies at Edinburgh University. I participated in a few. <laughs> um, I gradually got more and more involved in my classic society which I really enjoyed being in the society um, connected to my department because obviously you got to meet a lot of people and hang out with people on your course or that were generally interested in your subject. I'm not a competitive sport participator so I didn't really do anything like that but there were tons to pick from if that's something you're interested in and my experience of degree related societies was fabby, loved it but I would say that being on the committee in my fourth year. <laughs> Edinburgh University itself is, is really nice because it's right in the centre of Edinburgh um, a lot of the student accommodation and the areas that students tend to rent flats in are quite close to the university so travelling distance is very short. It is walkable if that works for you or there are tons and tons of public transport buses in Edinburgh. Um, it's really great public transport and on the cheaper side of public transport. There's also lots of cafes and bars if you're interested and lots of things to do like free museums and art galleries there's loads of lovely outdoor green spaces like Holyrood Park and the Meadows and Princess Street Gardens which are gorgeous and lovely to spend your time in when Edinburgh has those spectacular sunny moments. Rent in Edinburgh as Scotland goes is some of the highest um, so once you're outside of university accommodation, I never stayed in university accommodation so I cannot comment on that but once you're renting in Edinburgh it is not cheap in terms of Scotland, it is significantly cheaper than somewhere like London, but London is in no way representative in terms of rent. So I would generally say that Edinburgh is not particularly cheap and that is worth taking into consideration. I'm not exactly sure what rent prices are right now, so that's worth looking into if it's something you need to think about. The stuff we did as societies was never very expensive. Um, there's student union at Edinburgh, which serves really cheap food. And there's a little right next to the university, so that's cheap food for you. The library at Edinburgh University was incredibly well stocked. It was a wonderful library. And although I started to run out of material somewhat, in my postgraduate, not run out, but start. I started to become familiar with most of what was there and perhaps wanted a few more things. There was tons in, in terms of humanities and classics. There's so much in the library and it's a wonderful place to study. I really enjoyed studying in the library. There was also in the School of History, Archaeology and Classics a smaller library specifically aimed at those departments and had a lot of ancient texts and classics related books although you couldn't take them out of that library I believe, you could use them in that library. There's a law and divinity library if I remember correctly which sometimes are obviously very useful for humanities students and you can get access to that in special circumstances even if you're not a law or um, divinity student. There is also the National Library of Scotland which is a reference library which means that you can pretty much get anything that is written in English from that library, you can order it in or they might already have it in the library. I didn't really use this library much until I was a postgraduate but I believe you can get access to it as an undergraduate and um, you just need to apply for access. Um, you can't take computers and pens and stuff, you have to use pencils but it does mean if you need a specific book there's a good chance that you can get it from the National Library. There's also the Central Library um, of Edinburgh which is across the road from the Nat National Library which is just a general membership library that anybody living in Edinburgh can use and it has a wonderful array of just general stuff that you might want to read, not necessarily to do with your degree, it's just a great library. I was also able to use interlibrary loans at the university library which was really handy and the humanities department had access to most of the online journals and resource websites that I ever needed. There are resources at the university if you are struggling with health and mental health problems whilst in attendance, there is obviously a GP service, there is a student union, there are multiple things set out there to support you as a student if necessary. But I'm running out of things to say that I think would be helpful. If you have any more specific questions about my time at the University of Edinburgh then please do leave them in the comments down below and I will try my utmost to answer them as well as possible and if you are currently applying to university or trying to decide between offers and I wish you the best of luck and I will see you all again next time. Bye!